I can't help it if she didn't have a competitive primary. Uh, people know my position very well. Plus, I had about 35 or so forums and debates that weren't televised. And, you know, our gubernatorial candidates are having two. So one's appropriate. And, you know, if we had another one next week, we'd have the same questions and the same answers. So uh, we had a chance tonight. I thought Ross's questions were really good. Sometimes you get in debates and you get questions that the audience really doesn't care about. I thought all the questions he asked tonight, the audience cared about. Uh, I thought that people of the state of Texas deserved uh, five debates, given the fact that uh, the Republican nominees had over 20 opportunities to debate and to do forums. Tonight was my only chance, and I think the voters of the state understand that there is a clear contrast between Leticia Vandepute, a pro-business Democrat, and Dan Patrick. I think tonight is very clear. Uh, you have a conservative who will continue um, our strong economic framework that we've created in Texas, and another senator who's liberal who would like to take us the way of California. I mean, think what she said tonight. She is she didn't dispute being for an income tax because she knows she voted for a wage tax back in 2005, I think it was. Uh, she's talked about raising the gas tax and your driver's um, uh, renewal forms, um, your driver's license renewal. She's talked about giving away free community college. Well, there's no, there's no such thing as free. The taxpayers have to pay for that. Nothing could be more important in the decisions that we will make in the next few years in our legislature. And those decisions are going to boil down to are we going to invest in our infrastructure, roads, highways, bridges, water, and the most important infrastructure of all, of opportunity, and that's public education? I, I think, look, if you have um, a family, whether they be African-American, Mexican-American, Anglo-American, it doesn't matter, and they live in Oklahoma, and they want to go to the University of Texas, or Texas A&M, or any of our schools, why should they have to pay dramatically more than a non-citizen? I don't think that's fair. And I empathize with those, those students who have done a good job and graduated and were brought here um, not on their own. But it's a question of fairness. And, and it goes to the heart of why we need Washington to pass legal immigration reform so that we don't have students and young children brought here across the border by their parents. We need legal immigration reform so people can come to America in dignity. It was very strange. I thought that he would start to tone down that harsh rhetoric and his stance on immigration. And what we know tonight is that he continued to double down. Well, at least he owned up for it. But what I thought was strange is when I called for his release of taxes, given the fact that he has called for an increase in sales tax, that he still refuses to come clean and to present his taxes. So I can only wonder tonight, as other Texans might, Dan, what are you hiding? So what we've we really have is, is uh, my opponent, again, very nice. We're friends. We sat next to each other on the floor for eight years, just totally 180 degrees opposite on, on the issues. And I believe she's totally out of step with, with the majority of Texans. And my message is resonating. And I know that because we continue to see Republican business leaders and independents and Republicans all over this state say, you know, Dan's out of line even with my own party and they're coming over to support me. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.